It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be multiplying decimals where we determine whether the product is positive or negative. Here are our objectives today. You, the student, will multiply rational numbers in decimal form. And the question I'd like you thinking about as I go through the lesson is how we're multiplying rational numbers in decimal form and multiplying integers similar. So how are multiplying whole numbers and their opposites similar to positive and negative decimals? So here is our easy step-by-step -step instructions on how to multiply rational numbers in decimal form. So step one, we're gonna determine the sign of the product. We're gonna remember our same signs rule for multiplying. The product of two values with the same sign will always be positive. And then our different signs rule when we multiply, the product of two values with different signs will always be negative. So if they're both positive, the product will be positive. If they're both negative, the product will be positive. If one value is positive and one value is negative, negative product. All right, step two. We're going to line up the numbers as if they were whole numbers. So lining them up, by digits, ignoring the decimal point, but keeping it in place. Step three, we're gonna multiply the numbers as if they were whole numbers. Step four, we're gonna count the decimal places in each of the original numbers. And step five, in the product, we're gonna place the decimal point so that the number of the decimal places matches the total decimal places in both of the original numbers. And we're not gonna forget our sign from step one when we determined if they had the same sign or different signs to determine positive or negative product. All right, here we go. Here's a graphic organizer that we are going to use today, which is first step is to write the problem. And then we're gonna go through our five easy steps and we have our workspace over here. So hopefully after you practice using this for a while, you can go and do it on your own, kind of like training wheels. Here's our first problem. We're gonna multiply 2.5 or two and five tenths multiplied by three and 41 hundredths. So let's go put that into our graphic organizer and we're gonna do step one. We're gonna determine the sign of the product writing positive or negative in our step five box down here. The reason we're gonna do that is so that we don't forget because it could be a product that is positive or negative. So we're gonna look at our values. These are having the same sign. They're both positive values. So we're gonna to go to our same signs rule and know that with the same sign, they're always gonna be positive. So we're gonna put a positive sign in that last box so that we remember when we get to our final answer, we remember it's positive. Step two, we're moving on. Lining up the numbers as if they were whole numbers. So you're gonna remember what you did for decimals back a few years ago when you learned to multiply. We're gonna take the one with the most digits and put it on top. So this has three digits, we're gonna put it on top and then we're gonna line up 2.5 underneath and then we're gonna multiply. So we're gonna start at the right, we're gonna start with that five, right? We're gonna multiply these numbers as if they were whole numbers. So starting with that five, five times one is five. 5 times 4 is 20. So we're going to bring the 0 here and carry the 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Now we're ready to move on to the next digit, which is the 2. So we're going to put a 0, and then we're going to start. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we're going to add. 5 plus 0 is 5, 0 plus 2 is 2, 7 plus 8 is 15, so 5 and carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 6 is 8. Now we're ready for step 4. We're going to count the decimal places in each of the original numbers. So we have two decimal places and one decimal place for 3. So we're going to come down here to step five and in our product we're going to place a decimal point so the number of decimal places matches the total decimal places in both of the original values so three so we're going to go in 
three spot, three digits, and place our decimal point, and that is our product. And we don't need that positive sign in our product. We know that without a sign, it's positive. So eight and 525 thousandths is our product. Now it's your turn. We're gonna find the product of six tenths multiplied by negative eight tenths. So let's go over to our graphic organizer. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video here. You're gonna go through the five steps and then come back and see my work. Good luck. Welcome back. So step one was to determine the sign of the product. And we're gonna write positive or negative in the step five box. So we come over to our values. We have positive, negative. So these are different signs. And the product of two values with different signs is always negative. So going into our step five box, we're gonna put a big negative sign there to remind us. So if you have to answer any of your work on a computer, go ahead and put that negative sign in the answer box on your computer right at the start, and then you can't forget it. Moving on to step two here, we're gonna line up the numbers as if they were whole numbers. So we have the same digit, so it doesn't matter which one's on top. So 0 0.6 or 6 tenths multiplied by 8 tenths. We're gonna multiply these. So we're ready to multiply these in step three as if they were whole numbers. So we're gonna start right here. 8 times 6 is 48, so 8 and carry the 4. And 8 times 0 is 0, add the 4 is 4. So we're ready to go on to our next digit. So we're going to put 0 for our second row, and then we're going to do 0 times 6 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. And we're going to add these values. 8 plus 0 is 8, 4 plus 0 is 4, and 0 is 0. So step four, we're gonna count the decimal places in each of the original numbers. So we have one decimal place, a second, so two decimal places. So in step five, we're gonna go place our decimal point so that it is two digits in. So we're gonna count two digits in, put our decimal place, and then we're ready to answer. And don't forget it's negative, negative 48 hundredths is our product. Here's another one for you. You're gonna multiply negative five tenths multiplied by three and eight tenths. So let's go to our graphic organizer, bring in our product, our value. Now go ahead and pause. You do the five steps and then come back to check your work. Welcome back. So step one, we're gonna determine the sign of the product and write positive or negative in the step five box. A positive, I mean a negative and a positive, different signs, so it's going to be negative. So we're gonna put our negative sign in that box. Step two, we're gonna line up our numbers as if they were whole numbers. So I'm gonna put 3.8 underneath 0 0.5 because they line up. Even though this is zero, it still lines up. So we're gonna take and multiply the numbers as if they were whole numbers in our step three, starting with the eight times five is 40, zero, and carry the four, eight, times zero is zero plus four is 40, or is four, sorry, giving us 40 over here. Now we're gonna move over and we're gonna start with a zero as a placeholder for our second line. Three times five is 15, five, carry the one. Three times zero is zero plus our one, and we have one. So now we're gonna add these two quantities together. Zero plus zero is zero, four plus five is nine, and then we have one. And then we're on to count our decimal places in each of the original numbers. One decimal place, two decimal places total. So step five, we're gonna go put our decimal place into our product. So we're gonna slide over two decimal places, put our decimal, and then write our product down in step five. Negative one and nine tenths, you could put the zero here, it does not change the value. All right, one more for you to try. I'm gonna ask you to find the product, negative one and five tenths multiplied by negative 24 hundredths. We'll go over to our graphic organizer and bring in our values. So here's where you're gonna pause, do your best work and come back to check. Welcome back. Let's do step one. 
Step one is to determine the sign of the product, and then we're going to put positive or negative in step five box. So I come over to my two values, negative, negative. So they're the same signs. So when we have the product with the same signs, we know down here it's going to be positive. All right, we're ready for step two to line up the values. So I'm going to put 0 0.24 because there's two digits. We go to the hundredths, and our first one only goes to the tenth. All right, we're ready to go. We're gonna multiply in step three as if they were whole numbers. So we're gonna start here at our five and we're gonna multiply. Five times four is 20, zero, and carry the two. Five times two is 10, plus two is 12. So two and carry our one. Five times zero is zero, plus one is one. Now we're ready for our second row, going to our next digit. Put our zero placeholder in here. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 0 is 0. And now we're going to add. 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 4 is 6, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then we have that 0. Step 4, we're going to count our decimal places in each of the original. 2 plus 1 is 3 decimal places. So in step five, we're going to go place that decimal point three digits in. So let's go count one, two, three, put our decimal point in, and you can keep that trailing zero, but you don't need it. And of course, we don't need to have a positive sign if it's a positive answer. So 36 hundredths, again, you could have the zero here. It doesn't change the value. And that is our lesson today on multiplying decimals and determining whether or not we have a positive or negative product. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day, and I hope you come back soon.